<laughs> oh, hi Ashan, how's it going? I can't shake your hand, but I'll fist bump you. So, we are heading off to... You want to go to Twister and check yeah. it out? Let's yeah, go. let's go to yeah. Twister and check it out. Yeah. Welcome to Dasa Vlogs guys. So I'm here today with Ishanta Ratnayaka. He's a very close friend of mine. Uh, Ishanta and I, we studied together some time ago and this was like six years ago. Now I finally got the chance to catch up with him after after a very long time. I think in 2018, I briefly met Ishanta. The last time we met, like you mentioned earlier, we met in 2018 for the New Year's Eve party. Yeah. I think it was at Golf Face, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Go, go, uh, no, we were at Mount Oh, Lepinia. it was at Mount, yes, Mount, yes, yes, Mount. that's correct. So it was, uh, it was a very, like, you know, we got, took a photo, that was it. And then, uh, so what happened, Ishanta? Like all uh, these years, what, what what were you doing? And I don't know. I, I I don't know where to start. A lot of things happen. Uh, let's just uh, let me let me bring out the educational side. What happened was I did my dual degree in international hospitality management. Uh, it's a dual degree from the University of Toulouse, France, and Taylor's University, Malaysia. Uh, that's 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 basically what happened in the past few years in terms of an educational side. Um, ever since then, I'm back here uh, working on a few new ventures like, for example, Twister and I'm consulting on a few uh, hotel-related projects. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, other than that, there's nothing much uh, new because of COVID-19. A lot of plans have to be adjusted. Um, how about you, Eshan? So, bro, you know I graduated in, uh, in 2019 in December and uh, after that, I thought, why not take a break, right? Like, that's why I started blogging. So I thought, like, just do some blogs and just talk to people, hang out with my friends and, you know, just travel around Australia a little bit. And this this chapter coming to Sri Lanka for like two weeks for the big match was like the last thing I had it, had in mind and never thought that I would get stuck in Colombo for uh, for this law. Yeah. But I mean, one of the good things happens is I like, get to meet my old friends that I uh, I've lost touch for a long time. Yeah. So I mean, like now, even even back in Canberra, I also have done a lot of hospitality-related jobs. So how did you get get into this uh, this field? I mean, uh, I was inspired by a few family members who are already in the hotel field themselves. But apart from that, looking at Sri Lanka as a whole, one of our main incomes is tourism. I think uh, we bring about four point. 5 billion into the country, into the GDP, um, just by the tourism sector. Um, however, unfortunately, I think in terms of employment and staff, our level of service isn't uh, at a good standard compared to all the other countries. So I think we really need to brush up on our service side of hospitality. And uh, that's where I thought I'll focus on that area and see how I can contribute to my country. So, bro. So what do you think about the Malaysian scene, uh, the hospitality scene in Malaysia? Uh, Malaysia is quite, doing quite well. There's quite a lot of hotels there, yeah, from the Shangri-La, from Marriott, to different, different kinds of hotels. They have Langkawi, which is another island. And I think uh, in terms of that side, Malaysia is doing quite well. Uh, Sri Lanka is the question mark. And how are we going to improve on that? Yes, yeah, so I, I understand. Like, you know, there's a lot of catching up to do compared to other countries. Uh, so we are we we are good. We are, I'm not saying they're bad. We have a very good uh, hospitality industry. No, but Sri there's Lanka. some gaps here, right? No, no, no. Sri Lanka, there's a lot of scope, a lot of potential, um, and we've we've overcome our difficulties. For example, last year there was an unfortunate uh, Easter Sunday attack, and that really drove down tourism. Uh, hotels dropped in terms of occupancy really badly. And we were just climbing up and as things were getting better, COVID-19 hit. But we'll climb up from that as well. And uh, it's only that our government should uh, utilize all our resources efficiently, uh, considering what a beautiful country this is. And there's so much 
opportunities for everyone. So, bro, like now, uh, oh, that's the Sri Lankan traffic. People honing, tooting the horn. So, so typical Sri Lankan. Traffic. Typical Sri Lankan traffic. A lot of people are impatient. Impatient. Nobody likes to give someone else to you know move. So. Now where are we going right now, lad? Yeah, we're pretty much we're very close to Twister right now. Um, so Twister is located uh, down Gold Road, right opposite uh, Green Cabin. Uh, just take a ride from here, and we'll be at Twister shortly. Yeah, so uh, Twister is Ishanta's latest uh, uh, venture. Yeah, he started up uh, I think this year. Yeah, uh, last Twister, year. Twister, end of last year. So we started Twister. Yeah, Twister started end of last year, and I got to know when I got back in Colombo when I spoke to Ishanta, and uh, so I thought, why not go and check this place out, and uh, I can get a better idea with the man himself behind the whole chapter. So we are closing by. We actually. Yeah. So, how did you guys meet up, and how did you all come up with the concept of Twister? Twister. Um, so Fahad and I have been friends for quite a few years, and uh, we also live down the same road. So, we've been on topic with different projects, hospitality related, and uh, Twister was one of it. And uh, also, he's got exposure all over the world. So, have I? I've lived in Malaysia and Amsterdam, and uh, Turkish cuisine was a trend and has a lot of demand. And what we noticed was in Sri Lanka, there is no proper authentic Turkish cuisine. <laughs> That's when we thought of yeah, Twister. And uh, lucky for us, we have a really good international chef, which is the same as Turkish. Yeah. And he's uh, Michelin star trade. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. So he's hands on with everything. So the best part about Twister is everything is homemade. Awesome. So guys, tell me about the chef. So as Ishanta said, uh, there was a gap in the market. We want to launch Turkish cuisine, and we didn't find anybody launching authentic Turkish cuisine. And uh, it's lucky for us, with our connections, we found Kuzin Turan, who is also uh, a Michelin trained chef by his boss, Juan Amado, the first Michelin star, uh, three star restaurant in Austria. So, Kuzin is his prodigy. And we found him, and we had him partner with us. So, he's the one who curated the entire menu. From the sauces, the homemade rotis, and every single thing in the menu is approved by him. Uh, he also has a loyal following base because he was the first one to uh, run a three Michelin star inspired desert bar in Sri Lanka. Oh, that's cool. So uh, it's the same guy who's doing Twister <laughs> along with us, and he's hopefully planning to come down in August. So, what's the concept behind the word Twister, like the brand Twister? So as we all know, the word twister, when you, look, when you hear the word twister, you think of tornado, which is like uh, in a circular way. So if you look at the uh, lavash, which is also a shawarma, that's how we came with the swirl and we call it twister. Yeah, and don't forget the donut kebab. The donut kebab is as well. So, so I also mean twister in general, it's a catchy phrase, you know, twister is it's, it's trendy and you can see our logos and how things are as well. Yeah. yeah, as you were saying. So I was like wondering, like the food that you are making here, so you make it from scratch. And yeah, like everything using is... Sri Lankan spices to spice it up. Yeah, I mean we do have to cater to our taste buds of Lankan. So we have lavash, submarines, burgers, rice. So with all the, the food sets, we have different kinds of sauces. We have spicy mayo, garlic mayo, curry sauce, and also our exclusive truffle mayo sauce. Um, which we have, which we give as an option. So they, the customers have a variety of big pop. Yeah. I think Fahad will have collaborate on the uh, truffle mayo sauce and stuff. So I, I'm surprised truffle and, and something. So, so yeah, it's very really so, exclusive. So, so, so uh, as I told you, Jose, he was working in Europe with uh, Amadio, the three Michelin uh, chef. Yeah. So they worked around a lot around truffle. Mm. So we don't have truffles in Sri Lanka. Yeah, that's truffles are actually yeah. imported yeah. and it's quite expensive. Yes. So we managed to create we managed to create a sauce mm. uh, called truffle mayo, first time in Sri Lanka. Wow. Which you can add to any of the dishes mentioned in our video. So I've tried uh, mayo with truffle and it's it's pretty great. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, uh, so I understand like all the businesses in Sri Lanka have been hit quite bad and especially the hospitality industry and restaurants. 
Um, so how, how are you guys managing that? So as you mentioned, the tourism sector has got hit quite hard, but the government has given us a set standard regulation in terms of running it, uh, whether it's running it at 50% capacity and also uh, the hygiene standard that we need to have. You know, for example, all our staff have to wear gloves, masks, each one's temperature is checked, each customer who comes in has to be checked, then you have the 1.5 meter gap. So there's, there's quite a few uh, regulations that we adhere to make sure uh, customers are safe as well as our staff mm-hmm. and I think uh, from what I hear a lot of restaurants are struggling and uh, uh, from our side we had a lot of over eats orders and we also do private deliveries and uh, according to regulation we are also operating at 50% capacity and I think we've been uh, doing fairly well because of the demand for Turkish food. So you guys have Uber Eats and all that? Yeah, we have Uber Eats. Uh, we are just setting up with Disney. Uh, and then we have our own private deliveries. We have our own riders as well. Because okay. sometimes there's just so many That's orders. Good. That's good. We have to care for all of it. And we need to also make sure that our customers get fresh food. You know, hot, hot. Because sometimes when you outsource it to Uber and places, sometimes it will put late. Yeah. You know, it's not hot. Yeah. So when we send it on our rider, we know, we know they get the best. So tell me about the upstairs, the private dining space, like what are you looking at? Yeah, so Twister is, as you know, two stories. Upstairs, we want to have a section for private dining. You know, large families like to come. We can see it up to 30 to 40 easily upstairs. Uh, so that's the concept for upstairs, you know. Because most of the time, as you have come before as well, downstairs gets full. So we had to expand and open upstairs before. Uh, so that's the plan we have. So there's something running downstairs as well? Yeah. So. Apart from, so our main operations is on the first floor. Yeah. And second floor is uh, we, we at our peak period, we open upstairs. So what's the future for Twister? What's going to happen? Um, see, Twister itself is a franchise concept and we want to franchise it to others. Um, we want to expand locally and uh, internationally. And two countries are already uh, having discussions with the Singapore and Malaysia. They're interested, they're very much interested in opening there. Yeah. And uh, we're also looking into expanding into Wattala and Wattarambula locally. That's so nice. yeah. um, so That's what the current plan is. I mean, of course, internationally expanding now uh, is held back a little bit because of COVID-19. You can't travel, you can't set up meetings, you can't do anything. But locally, we're already looking into a few especially when one more office, we have one more outlet in one more yeah. office that's operating. So is it, is it going to open anytime soon? But I uh, yeah, one more office will be opening in July. Right now there's really no point because not, not everyone wants to go to the mall and I think mm-hmm. coming into a place like the flagship outlet where safety is number one priority, hygiene yeah. is up, people feel much safer coming into a closed restaurant that way into a mall for people. So if I ask you guys, what's a signature dish that's unique for Twister, what would you call it? I think we'll say it together, it's a lavash shavarma. So I'd like to have one of those. Yeah, for sure. Let's check it out and see. Ha 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 ha